Hey everyone, it's Allison Madel again from Conduits of Love. How are you? Well, this is part two from Infertility to Fruitfulness, our little part uh, two of this series that was really supposed to be encouraging with our testimony and also some maybe guidance for you. And really my heartbeat is to let you know you're not alone. And everybody goes through so much in different um, paths and journeys and there's just so many things we all are alike, but yet we're so different. So this is my heart cry that this can make a difference and encourage you. Birth parents, if you're listening, these are to encourage you too. Because you know what? If it wasn't for what I'm going to get ready to get into in a minute, for our daughter and our son's birth mother, uh, excuse me, birth mothers, plural, we would never be celebrating like we are. We would be. We'd be thankful where God gives us, but because of the birth parents out there, we're allowed to have our heart's desire, and I can't thank you enough, and I thank you for saying yes to life. That's another thing. I bless you. Every birth mother out there, we know that you go through so much, and nobody knows but you. Nobody can say, oh, I understand. Well, no, we don't, because we're not walking in your shoes, but me personally, I honor you. I applaud your decision to say yes to life. You are very strong. You're very brave. You're very courageous. And I can't bless you enough. And if you say yes to adoption, I've spoken this before to um, other people I've ministered to here and there. If you say yes to adoption and you bless somebody, an adoptive family with your child, you haven't any idea of what you do. The, you have a miracle inside of you. God picked you for such a time as this to carry this precious child. When this child is born and you've picked out the right adoptive, adoptive parent, parents for your child, you just gave them a miracle. Many times they have been waiting for a very long time. And they, this baby of yours is beyond an answer to prayer. Sometimes words can't express what you do when you say yes to life. And that you choose what you believe in your heart, the perfect adoptive family. So I bless you. Okay, so I wanted to continue on our journey and um, share more about what we uh, walk through. So we left off at the time when China, um, basically, we had to walk away. Not because we wanted to, but we really felt the directive from the Lord saying, No, this is not time. I don't want you doing this. So we did have to walk away out of obedience. Yeah, we could have. We could have moved forward with it. We could have waited. We could have. But there was really no grace on it. And when there's no grace on it, you know, we just don't, we don't want to be disobedient, right? Because we got to believe that he's got a big plan and he has something awesome in store, which he did. And he does. Okay. So we are still praying through these years. Ethan, our son, our miracle son. Ever since he was little, and I think I've said this before, he prayed every night for so long, God, give me baby brother. And when he was more verbal as he grew older, it turned into, God, give me baby brother and two baby sisters. Now, he prayed that prayer for years. I mean, years, at least 10 years, at least. Some nights it was tears, some nights it was joy, some nights it was anger. But he prayed, and he was diligent. He wasn't giving up. He's... He, he meant business. And we find out later from the Lord as we journeyed on. <laughs> it was Ethan's job. God commissioned Ethan when he was so little because it was the job of the siblings to pray in their siblings. So God moved on him at a very young age. And I think he may have been three when he started praying in two. So it's pretty like, wow. All right. So. We, we're praying still. We're praying as a family. Ethan's still praying his prayers. We're praying and just praying God to move. I remember putting in prayer requests. I would go to more healing rooms. I would do everything I could. Um, the fertility wasn't working. We were believing supernaturally that God was going to heal me so we would have a child. But yet nothing was working. So we kept praying. We just were like, God, we don't know what you're doing. We just don't know. We, we're, we're standing believing you got something up your sleeve. I mean, we got so much negativity. When finally, it was in March, 
February, March, 2012. So we're talking how many years have passed? We're talking like seven years. And I'm in our kitchen. And Ethan's doing his schoolwork. At that time, I homeschooled him. And all of a sudden, I heard God is audible, as audible could be. I heard him say, go get your daughter. I was like, what? Get my daughter. Where am I going? And I feel like my arms are like, north, south, east, west, north, south, east, west. Where am I going? And it was, boop, he was quiet. And I kept asking, where are we going? Where are we going to get my daughter? Where are we going? Where are we going? So our family started praying. We started praying very hard because now God's saying it's time. And we started looking and researching different countries because now more time's lapsed. So the options are a little more, mm, a little more scarce because some countries, well, I, we were over a certain age, we couldn't adopt. Certain countries, um, we could adopt an older child, but we just didn't feel peace. So we were trying to really pray this through and say, God, where do you want us to go? What are we doing? We'll, we'll go all over the world to find our child. Just tell us where to go. Still nothing. So at that time where we lived, we had had so many horror stories of the system. The Child Protective Services um, up there was called DIFIS at the time. Um, so DCS, you want to call them. Where the children were adopted through the system. And there was so much of a mess. The system messed things up. Um, we heard of the birth parents showing up, drunk, stoned, whatever, at the door of the adopted family's house. I mean, we just heard so many horror stories. And we're like, oh, no, we're not having this. No, no, we're not adopt. No, no, no adoption domestic. No, 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 no. We don't want anybody coming to our doorstep. We don't want any nonsense. We don't want the system botching things up because, you know, we, yeah, it was a hot mess. We're like, no, 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 no. So we figured we'll go internationally. Now at this time, Dave's like, no, we're not going to do China. No, I don't want to do China anymore. No, 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 no. So we said, okay. So we're praying and praying and praying and praying. We're talking to more families who adopted. I people tell me they adopted through the foster care system where we lived. And I was like, uh-huh. Good for you. <laughs> me? Now we're not doing it. Then we talked to the people, you know, internationally adopted. And it was great. You know, we met people... Chinese Korean adoptions it, it's just it was great to see all these the different cultures that would come from adoption it was awesome but we're still we weren't getting our peace so finally we outreached to basically the same agent that we were looking at back in 2001 and we just talked to this we're still figuring this out so she said okay listen let me give you some suggestions you guys pray and I'll give you some contacts and talk to these families so a long story short we decided to go to Russia we we're going to go to a go through the process of Russia adoption. So we're all, we're all ready, talk to families. Yeah, we're good to go. So the day we met with our social worker, we're sitting at our dining room table, actually kitchen table, and she said, great, guys, great, great. We'll get the paperwork going. That's wonderful. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, good deal. All right, yeah, yeah. Fine, sign some papers. Here we go. We're ready to roll. It's awesome. Perfect. The day after... The social worker calls us and says, Russia adoptions are now closed. There was a situation, and I'm not going to get into it because we found the truth of the matter behind the scenes because it actually happened in where we live right now. And I know people who were involved with that situation, so it wasn't quite what the media presented. But anyway, it was enough for Russia to say, nope, no more adoptions, period. So we're back where we started from, basically. And now we're not feeling grace. We're not feeling peace. We're like, God, you said go get our daughter, and we're now like kind of feel like we're running to a brick wall. Our son's upset. He's like, Dad doesn't want to adopt China. I don't know what we're gonna do. And he's upset. And I'm like, I'm not getting peace. I don't know what's going on. So I talked to our pastor at that point, and he had relationship with a couple in the state we live in, and he's like, listen, talk to the wife. And just connect with them, and they'll guide you. I said, well, I can't do that. They're they're busy. You know, they're they're busy. They're they're international pastors. I mean, they're they're busy. So I said, listen, you contact her, and then if she wants to communicate with me, have her communicate with me, 
or I may have been that he gave me her email address or something. I forget. So we started communicating, and she told me her journey. They basically um, went through an attorney in another state in California, and they first adopted through China. They did that. Then the second daughter, they adopted through California through his agent, who was, an, again, an attorney. It was a facilitator. And I said, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm thinking I'm still not feeling peace about United States adoptions, but... Uh, and she said, we're actually waiting for our next child right now in the waiting process. I said, wow. So after much prayer, we just decided to go with that facilitator. Um, it may have been a couple of days, a week, two weeks, the max, before we were now journeying with that facilitator in California. We started um, the home study process. We had used... The, new, uh, the state we lived in, agent, did all that, had our profile books. We, we were ready to go. So we did. We, in the process, actually ended up moving to the state where this family, who we were communicating with, the ones that adopted through California, we moved down here. We joined their church. <laughs> it was awesome. But um, we were waiting. It was now about, we were in a year into it, so it's 2013. We're now down or now down south. So there was no, nothing going on. There's still no, there's no still no baby, no child. So we keep, we keep waiting, we keep waiting, we keep waiting. Then all of a sudden, we're about, what, living here, golly, a year. I think it was 2014. I started having dreams about a little girl. I already had a dream about a little boy, and I thought we were getting a boy. That was before we moved down here. So our friend said to us, you know, I had a dream. You thought you were getting a boy, but you're getting a girl. I had a dream. And I had a dream that I was in the hospital having my second son because I just adopted a little boy not long before our daughter came. And she said, oh, how did you do it? And I said, ah, it was so simple. Well, that was year 2014. I believe it was October. And I was having these little girl dreams, which was really cool because it was now the dreams are about specifically about our daughter, exactly what she was going to look like, exactly her temperament, everything to a T. It was exactly pre, you know, preparing us and showing us our daughter to come. It was now, yeah, it was around September. I know the dreams that my friend had um, actually came after I was in our apartment where we were living. We were building a house in the town that we were living in. And I feel like God was telling me, your daughter's been conceived. Her birth mother was raped. She'll be born in California. And she'll be a hospital call. And that was it. And I was like, whoa. And then my friend came forward like a couple weeks later and told me about her dream. And then I'm having all these little girl dreams. We finally moved into our home we were building in March. And I'm kind of like at the Lord. Okay, now where is she when she come? And he said, remember the dream. June. I know exactly the date that she was conceived. It was September 21st of 2014. Here we are. And I'm kind of getting grumpy with the Lord because um, I forgot that word he gave me. He said that she was going to come in June. And nine months after September 21st was June 21st. I forgot about that because life got a little bit busy. We were now um, youth ministers and, and living life and getting unpacked and, you know, just living, right? Sometimes, I mean, I recorded my dreams. I recorded the words I got. But in the day-to-day life, I, I kind of forgot what God said. And I encourage you, you hear from the Lord. He gives you a word. Or you have dreams and visions about what's going on. Don't forget them. Hold on tight because they are very meaningful and powerful. So, anyway, it's now June twenty second, 2015. Aeth and I, our, my son, we're doing a standardized test um, for him. And so it's the Monday afternoon, the day before was Sunday, June 21st. It was actually Father's Day. And we're doing the standardized test. And all of a sudden, here comes a phone call from California. And it was one of the agent's workers calling me. And she said, would you guys be interested? There is a little girl who was born yesterday in California and she's going through the whole thing. She's giving me her app car score, her stats, you know, what they know, you know, all information. And all I could do is say yes. I, I mean, 
I just couldn't say anything else. Like my brain and my mouth weren't working. I could just whisper yes. And she said, okay, I'm going to present you and I'll call you back. I go, okay, great. So the next thing I know, I'm going, Dave. I'm saying, um, I just got a call. Um, I think it's our daughter. I think it's Maddie. Because you know what? I I haven't had any reservations to, to go back and forth because they're either child that we may have a possibility of moving forward with. I, the Lord kept talking to me in the last how many years or three years saying, if you go for that child, you're kidnapping because that's somebody else's child. And I thought, like, wait, no, Lord, we're not going to kidnap. But this time was the only time that he was silent and he did not say, don't do that. No, that's not your daughter. No, wait, nothing, nothing. It was just like a silence. So I said, be prepared. We got to get airfare. We got to do this. We got to get that. And, you know, just get ready. So I made some phone calls, let people know. We had to get a house sitter. We had to get, you know, somebody to stay because nobody was going to be home at that time. So I called back. I guess it was like an hour later because I was just sitting there like, gosh, I'd like to know just so we can sleep tonight. You know what I mean? So I call back, say, hey, guys, give me a call back. Let me know what happened if the birth mom said yes or no, whichever way, just so we have closure, so we can sleep tonight. Five minutes passed, and the worker called me back and said, you called, I noticed. I said, yeah, I just want to know if there was any decisions or what's the latest. And she said, well, I'm so glad you called because you've been picked. I, I mean, my heart must have been, like, jumping out of my chest. I was like, ah. And I said, really? She said, Yeah. The birth mother did not want to see a profile book. She said, I trust you, and I want you to pick out the best family for my baby. So you've been picked. So the worker was used by God to pick us. And the day that our daughter was born was exactly nine months to the day after she was conceived. So there you go. So we flew out to California the next morning and spent five days in NICU. She stopped breathing, turned blue when she was born, but stupid devil thought he had her be didn't and she's doing great she's healthy strong as an ox and is like a superstar soccer player now <laughs> so praise god and with this little man we've had um we started journeying back in 2017 with him and i can't even tell you how many people had dreams and visions and i've had dreams and visions about him and uh, you know it's just been amazing and just like god showed us in all his dreams he was going to be dark-haired little guy that very strong very bold and that's exactly what has happened so um i can give you a lot of information for the four years but i'm going to spare you i'm going to say from start to finish we had to do some things different we had to shift agents but you know what we had to go on this journey we started in california and we ended up believe it or not we ended up in florida but god also said to me about october of 2020 he said, you need to go to Florida. It's a rescue mission. Now, once you get down there, you got to go get your, you get your kids. I said, okay, Lord, you got it. So we found this awesome agent through a divine appointment. We were searching for other agents. Um, we signed up with two in Florida, and we signed up with somebody else in Nevada. And I kept following the Lord said, go find another one. There's one more to find. There's one more. You're not done yet. And we spent like about five months searching for the right agent. And finally, talking to another agent for um, an, an adoption agency in Florida, this wonderful woman said, you know, and I'm telling her our story, what we've been going through, waiting for, it was at that point over four years, about four years, I forget, I lost track of time, but he, she, I told her our story, and she said, let me give you the information for who I use for adopting our son. Have you ever heard of him? She gave me the agent's name. And I said, No. And she said, we were matched within two weeks, two or three weeks. And that's exactly what happened with us. We talked to the attorney. We had a consultation. They closed down for a little bit for COVID. We probably would have been matched within two weeks, but within three weeks we were matched. Our birth mom said yes. And that was that. And next thing you know, we she just delivered August 28th. So what is my point? My point is to encourage you. I mean, I could have been... I, you know, it was getting tough. I'll be honest, four years is a long time to wait for a child. I'll be real. That's a long journey. But at the end of the thing, I knew God had his hand in it. I know there was a big testimony to come because 
you know what, we could have thrown in the towel and said, forget this. This is, this is really hard. This is really rough. But we had to keep believing that God had a plan and he had something amazing he wanted to do. And I know the story's not over because in the last, since 2017, I've had dreams about a little girl along with this little boy. So there is another one coming. I'm excited to see what he does. But for now, we're going to focus on this little guy. His name is Jonah. And we're just so thankful for him. And we're so blessed. So one thing I want to say to you, adoptive families, is do not ever lose hope. Do not let hope defer get in because that makes your heart grow sick. Don't do that. Just keep telling yourself all those that all those promises that you know God told you to adopt he has your child out there birth families I encourage you don't ever get discouraged or frustrated there's help out there give us a holler if you ever need guidance about who you can connect with to get assistance there's so much out there for you God has a big plan it's huge it's bigger than we can ever imagine but remember this, I haven't said this in a while, but I'm going to tell you, it's all about the children. It's all about these babies. And this is a generation that he's raising up to be a part of, like us, we're a part of the army. We, these kids are absolutely fierce against the enemy. And I believe he's picked you to store them and birth families. I thank you because he picked you to create them. So God created these babies through you and you are saying yes to life. And you're allowed these mighty warriors, these powerful ones to be born. So I bless you. Um, I wanted to share one little quick thing about um, adoptive families. If you haven't felt yet or led for a clarity about a route to go, I mean, I, we can help you with that. But there's something out there still. Um, I, I, I celebrate this one. There's something called embryo adoption. And I don't know if you've heard of it. If you're in your 40s, the cutoff age, I believe, is 45. But it's where you can actually adopt an embryo. Now, President Trump was able to rescue, basically, long story short, make it um, all these frozen embryos that were abandoned or were getting ready to be thawed, and he got them out of so many fertility centers. And so they weren't taken by FDA to have them um, be experimented on or mixed with mice to make these these creatures. Oh my gosh, it's just so so evil. But anyway, he was President Trump was able to get access to these babies, these embryos, and they're able to do embryo adoptions. And we celebrate with a friend of ours whom we led to embryo adoption, and she gave birth to her son through embryo adoption in August. And it's just such a wonderful gift. So it's still going on. You do need a home study before you start the process, but there are clinics throughout the country who are still doing these transfers. So if you have an interest, give us a holler. We can try to lead and guide you to some of the clinics out there that you can have a pregnancy. You can have the experience and you will, you know, you'll all be adopting. You'll adopt and you'll carry your own child. How about that? Two in one is a blessing. So anyway, that's one thing I wanted to share with you. Um, be honest with you, I would, I would have done it myself, but I missed the cutoff, so, yeah. Anyway, guys, I love you all. Um, please, if there's any questions you have, any concerns, please, please email me um, at www.conwitsalove.com. All or a case, all connected, no spaces. Or give me a holler directly at Allison, A-L-L-Y-S-O-N, at conwitsalove.com. All or a case, all connected. I would love to hear from you. I would love to share. I would love to encourage, just pour into you, encourage you. For now, I'm going to pray over you and just say you're not alone. You're never alone. You have so many around you. you don't realize it. God's with you. Jesus is with you. You have people out there who are willing to, and ready to stand with you. And I just bless you. So, Father New Jesus, everyone listening at the sound of my voice, I just pray for blessings and shalom, release and command the peace and shalom and rest of God to consume them tonight in the name of Jesus. Father, I ask you to have encounters with each one. Let there be such a beautiful encounter, a love encounter with each one listening. I ask you to give them everything they need. If they need strength, I ask you to release it tonight in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare 
a new beginning. I decree and declare the best is yet to come. I decree and declare every heart's desire that you plan inside of them will come in the name of Jesus. Father, as the enemy has been raising up the standard, I thank you, Father God. You're going to crush the enemy. Um, in your word, you said... When the enemy comes in like a flood, you raise up the standard with the breath of the Lord drives. And that's Isaiah, I believe, 59, 19. So I, I just say, ask you, God, to just crush the enemy. I'm coming against these ones and, and their families. Crush the plans the enemy is trying to use against them. And we just decree and declare tonight that everything the enemy meant for evil, that you use it for good, all for your glory. And I just pray blessings over them. And Lord, I just thank you in advance for what you're doing in their lives and the secrets that you have stored up, and the suddenlies that you have right there, yeah, you're right there, right there ready for them. And any hope deferred or discouraged, we just bind and break off them, and we command everything go to pit of hell in Jesus' name. And I just release love and joy, strength, and shalom in the name of Jesus. Father, bless them abundantly. And Lord, we do ask that you draw to us those that need extra help and support and encouragement. Father, yes, we are joined, but you just bring them to us so we can pour into them and speak life into them, help them get on the road they need to go on, and just walk with them and talk with them and bless them, because this can be hard. Adoption journeys can be challenging, Lord, but it's all about the babies and your plan for them. And Lord, we thank you for that spirit of adoption that you give us and the heart of adoption you gave us. Lord, we thank you for that, because adoption is all about you, because you are so good. You adopted us through your family through Jesus. So we thank you, Father. And we bless your name, God. And we bless these ones. All in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. So I want to thank you for tuning in. Tuning in. <laughs> Turning us on. I want to thank you for listening. And I hope that what I had to share helped you and encouraged you. Because that's all we want to do is be an encouragement. And we really, really, really want to see you have your child or children. And we want every child to have their forever, godly, loving, forever families. For our families, we also feel the same about you guys. We are thankful for you. We bless you. And we can't commend you enough for saying yes to life. And to allow your precious miracle child to have a family that you pick out. Or that you feel would be the right fit in what you want. So we bless you. Thank you guys. Until the next time. Um, we bless you and give us a holler if you need anything. We're there for you. We love you. And again, if you would like to please subscribe to our YouTube channel, just hit that bell. If you like the podcast, please again hit the thumb for your like, share it with others. We appreciate it. The only way that people are going to get in touch or find out about us is by you sharing. And we deeply appreciate you and we love you. So until next time, have a beautiful, blessed week. We're here for you. We love you. Thanks. Talk to you later.